Okay, here we have our control unit. Um, I've already turned on the power. I checked and the first sensor on our cable is set is uh, the first letter on the first sensor on our cable is A. So I set these two switches to A. If it was B, we just simply switch it to B. All right, this is where cable number one lands. This is our non-detecting cable leading out to the fence. This is where cable number two would land if we had one. These are our relay outputs. So we have zone one through 10. Then we have our cable cut alarm and then a tamper. Here's our tamper right here. All right, um, so here's our on and off switch. This switch right here enables the RJ45 connection. So we need to turn that on in order to connect our computer to it. So I've turned it on, plug in our ethernet cable, and now we're ready to start programming. Okay, so now we're gonna open up Google Chrome, type in the IP address. I've already set my computer to match the same IP scheme as the control unit. Username is admin, type in the password. Okay, first page you'll see is the configuration page. This is where you can set your IP address, you can change your your uh, password, and where you can set the clock, internal clock to match your computer. So if you hit send right here, it'll change it. You need to select English and hit send, and it will match it to the time on your computer. Next, we go to our settings tab. We have a cable on cable number one, so we're going to say direction one, configuration, hit send. You hear the two beeps that indicate it's gone into calibration mode. Now we'll wait, I think usually up to a minute before we get another beep, meaning that it has calibrated. So there it goes, it calibrated. So now we can see how many sensors we have. It says we have 16 sensors on on direction number one. If we wanted to set the sensitivity, we can select all of them or we can set individual sensors. Okay, uh, sensors that we don't have are grayed out, you can't select those ones, but typically you select all. Um, set the sensitivity you want it to be at, so we want it to be at 10, hit send. Hear the beep confirming that it set those sen that sensitivity. Now, if you wanted to adjust just a single one or a couple single ones, now you would go in and set sensitivity of just a single sensor. Let's say we wanted to change one up higher, we can set that one. All right, now this is always gonna revert back to one, so don't think that that means that your sensitivity is set at one. Over here is where you can see your sensitivity setting, okay? So you can see these are all set for 10, this one's set for 14. Next, we, next thing we wanna do is create a zone. So we go over here to zoning, this will automatically, um, when you first calibrate, it's gonna set all those sensors to zone number one. So you'll wanna go down here to reset. And it will clear any zones that it automatically created. Um, it will automatically set cable number one to zone one, cable number two to zone two. We don't have a cable to number two today for this video. Um, but we're gonna say we want zone number one to be cable number one we can start with sensor number one, which is going to be the first sensor on cable number one. We are going to say that we want it to end with sensor number 10. Hit send. Okay, and then... Oh, that didn't take for some reason. So one, sensor one, cable one, sensor 10. Send. Okay, so it should automatically pop up with zone number two. So we want cable two to start with cable one, sensor 11, and we want it to end with sensor number 16. So now we just created two zones out of the 16 sensors that we have. Now if we wanted to start with the last sensor, we could have said, okay, we're gonna start with sensor number 16 and end with sensor number one. Uh, if we had a cable two, you can have it cross over from cable one into cable two. 
And if you mess up, you gotta hit reset down here and start over, okay? Next thing we wanna do is we'll go over here to our settings. We can select the number of impacts that we want before an alarm. For the video, we're just using it on one impact. Right here, we can also change the turn on and off the buzzer. So it's activated. You want to leave it activated while you're doing testing. That way you can hear when the alarms come through. But once you're done testing, you want to dis disable the um, sounder. Okay. If we had sensors on cable number two, it would list them right here. So now... Uh, we can go back to visualization, and it tells us that we have 16 sensors on cable 1, cable 2 is not configured. There's no cable cut alarm on cable 1, otherwise this would go red. Okay, so zones 1 and 2 should be green down here, so I did something wrong. So I think this is a typical mistake people make. So I'm going to go back to settings. Yeah, it's still in calibration mode, so now we need to switch it back to detect mode. Hit send. You hear the two beeps indicated that it's exited calibration mode. So now if we go to visual, visualization, it shows our two relays are green. If we trigger an alarm, you see the relay go red. So zone two just got triggered. And over here it says zone two, cable one, sensor number 14. All right. Now this is a great tool for um, checking all the ear zones or checking all your zones to make sure that they alarm. So once you get an alarm, you hit acquittal. It'll clear the alarm, and you see that your zones are not in alarm anymore. Technical default is the same as up here. This one will show which sensor it is. This block will go red and it'll show what sensor it is. Technical default down here will just be red, meaning your alarm is in, or your relay is in alarm state. Okay, after you've created some alarms, you can go into the history, view your history, so you can see everything that you've done here. Um, when I triggered some zones outside, we have intrusion, alarm zone two, cable one, sensor number 12. Intrusion, alarm zone 1, cable 1, sensor 9. Modification of the zoning. End of configuration. So this history will store up to a thousand events. And then um, as it continues to fill up, it will just delete the oldest and keep the newest. Alright, so that is it for our programming of the GFENT 600.